even though you can know exactly what you need to do, it's all about what happens in live time and being able to execute calmly your trading process, be aware of all the tactics they're going to throw at you and be icy steel focused on what you need to do in live time. to manage your risk, to execute and fight for the best price and why you're entering in the market when you are and know that you're targeting asymmetrical risk reward and making sure that you're squeezing the maximum amount out of a winning trade that you can and then cutting your losses when you're wrong and being brutally, it's a business. As soon as you get into that headspace about cutting losses and not attaching yourself to the outcome of every individual trade. So it's really important if you're in a trade to pay attention to that three hour window because as we get closer towards that next session in the New York trading session and you're in a trade and the market has started to consolidate in a lower or upper 50 pip range, that market could be preparing to stop hunt the trade that you're in or pull back to the numbers if you're not in, either for a move back inside of the range or even a continuation for a measured move down through that next double zero box. So even if you're trading between the 50s, we're going to go through this as we look as we head into the Europe and London Open right now, but you have to understand they will make you chase the price. So often if you get a fill price away from the numbers on a larger candle, be cognizant that that market is potentially building up orders, pulling you further away from the, the stop hunt that they're going to take on later. So in one candle, if you get a poor fill, that one candle can trap in three or four candles or even three or four hours of price action. They will flash and, and move the buy and sell price very rapidly at certain levels, usually at the highs or lows or at areas or where they're about to move the market to get you to second guess what you should be doing. They will hold price at a level, again, to get you to second guess. So you get into the market, it's moving around, it's, it's trading. You get in and all of a sudden it sits there and a, a 15 minute candle goes by and the next one sits there and it doesn't really go anywhere. And that whole time you're sitting there wondering should I be in this trade? It should have went already. It should have moved. And you pull out of that winning trade and on the next candle it drops 25 pips in your direction. So again, they will hold price. They will widen the spreads, maybe two, three pips. We've seen some of the spreads widen on the pound Australian by as much as 50 pips during some of the volatility. <clears throat> again, that, that is designed to keep traders away from better fills. They will use fast moving price action and again that forces traders to chase the market and inevitably if you're trying to go long you'll usually get the highest price and if you're trying to go short you will get filled at the lowest price. So these are tactics that again the smart money will use to give you poor fills to get you to chase the price far away and then stop hunt, your, stop hunt that trade before they move it in the direction that they intend. They will, they will, again, build positions up slowly over two or three hours and in two candles go back and stop hunt traders who are maybe up 50, 75, even 100 pips because of some of the recent volatility. Now, interesting, there always seems to be a tweet or a news item or some kind of uh, announcement by a government head or an, uns an unscheduled announcement that seems to coincide in that window that they could use as justification for a 100 pip or a 50 pip spike in five or 10 minutes. All the meanwhile building up volume for the real move. So even yesterday, interestingly enough, Europe and London heading into the US, we had 50, 100 pip moves. And again, we saw that market reverse back up through the highs and into the, the New York Open, go all the way back down again and hit the lows in a couple of the markets. So plenty of movement, but again, remember, we work.
from the high and the low of the day. We look at big, big structure. We want to know, is there a bigger geometrical pattern? You know, we've talked about head and shoulder reversals, whether that's long or short, double tops, double bottoms, you know, descending triangles, ascending triangles, symmetrical triangles, bigger picture volume on the outsides. We want to work from the high and the low of the day. Where are our round numbers? Okay, which 100 pip box are we trading inside of? We're going to go through some more examples of today's levels. Market opens, is it a stop hunt? Are we inside of the box? Are we inside of the 100 pip box targeting one of the extremes for a stop hunt? Or are we outside of the box already and are we already positioned for either a continuation or a reversal back inside of range? Which type of price action are we looking for? We talked about this in the other videos. We want to see tails. Tails on the bottom, tails on the top. We want to see engulfments. We want to see little bars at numbers in the direction that we're trading in, whether that's a bear candle, a bear hammer, but we usually want to see those at numbers with engulfment patterns. We want to see an indication that the market is accepting price and going to move to the next side of that double zero box. Once we see that confirmation pattern, we want to fight for the best price level. We'll already have an idea of where we're looking to position ourselves. We should already know this before the market opens. Once it starts trading, it's going to tell us where they're trading from. We should know where we want to get in at. And you may not be able to get right in at the numbers, but we want to be, if we're buying, we want to be buying low. If we're selling, we want to be selling high. And the market could break into the next double zero box, we still want to be buying low in that double zero box. If we're buying off of numbers, it's because we're going back up into a box. We're selling off of 50s, it's because we're going back down inside of a 100 pip box. Asymmetrical risk reward, you're targeting four or five, maybe 10 times your risk especially if you've got the highs and lows where they've built up contracts inside and the extremes are outside of this 100 pip box. You want to make sure that you're managing that process through. If you go to break even too fast, you're going to get stopped out. If you're, if you're trailing the stops or trailing the trades, they're probably going to stop you out. Be patient. Be aware that if that's the low, be willing to hold on to that position until it shifts into the upper 50 pip box. If it's getting close to your target, start paying attention to how price is behaving, especially if it's already done a stop on. And then review. How did you do? What did you do well? Did you chase the trade? Did you get in calmly and place your order at the best price? Did you have a limit order? Did you, did you manage that trade okay? Did you take off as much as you could from a winning trade? Did you cut your losses if it was a losing trade? All the little things, again, that are going to allow you to keep getting better because the smart money we, we, you, even when you have, Vince Lombardi was a famous U.S. football coach in the NFL. He said, we're going to be so good at executing our playbook that we'll even give it to you to study and we'll still beat you. So that's one of the things you have to be aware of. The smart money knows that you know some of these things and they're still going to try and trick you into playing their game. So people want to talk I had a, uh, an email the other day about um, psychology and trade management and um, one of the things that I mentioned was that trading psychology to me is, is almost uh, it's a fallacy. You're either executing your trading plan or you aren't. If you aren't, you're not trading, you're gambling. You have a job to do. You have a job to do. Execute your trading plan. You have a stop loss. You have a profit target, you have an entry criteria, you have a trade management process. The outcome is irrelevant. Computers, algorithms do not have trading psychology. They execute the code that is programmed into them. That's how you have to get. It's a business. If you're targeting asymmetrical risk reward, if you're taking out three, four, five times your risk, you cut your loss, you move on to the next trade. If you made a mistake, you made a mistake. Make sure you don't make it again. Improve upon yesterday's performance. So let's take a look at some of today's charts. Let's look at the levels. Let's look at what happened on some of the charts yesterday. And today, let's do it better. So stay disciplined, traders. Stay focused. And may the markets go with you. Traders, Stacy Burke. Stacy Burke Trading. We're going to be reviewing the levels today on the pound crosses and some of the U.S. crosses. 
And as I mentioned in yesterday's video with the pound Aussie, pound New Zealand, because of the volatility and the spreads, um, I have removed my 50s on these boxes. I'm just looking specifically at round numbers. One of the problems with the uh, Aussie and New Zealand pairs is that the spreads have been, you know, 20, 30 pips at times. And that makes it a bit more difficult to be willing to take risk when there's good quality trade setups on the US cross pairs. So just today again going through, we'll go through yesterday's trades. We talked about identifying the high and the low of Asia and then looking at which 100 pip boxes or in the case of the pound Oz, pound New Zealand, perhaps multiple 100 pip box highs and lows. And again, we see that the market hits the lows, puts pins down, comes up, stop hunts, trades from the Asian session, the lower level shorts, comes back, stop hunts traders that are long at the London Open, and then goes back and hits the high of the day once, twice, three times before reversing back into stop hunting traders who were long again in that later pre-US late London session. So one of the things that is important regardless of the spreads regardless of the volatility that when we're working from the high and the low the market will give us evidence you know we've got three candles with three pins again the traders who are going to smaller time frames at the london open may be looking to enter in somewhere in that double zero box even though the market's flashing up and down fast candles obviously with these pins that's a hundred pip box you can see the price was moving moving rapidly up and down but if you come to the screen focused on number one we can see that there was a stop hunt that occurred in asia at that level so we, they already gave us a a possibility that they were willing to go down in that lower box but come back up and then into the London Open once, twice, three times they pin the bottom and again traders who have gone to break even or chase that price potentially may have been stopped out because of the spreads and again the market went to the high of the day once pulled back, twice pulled back, three times pulled back this second pullback gives us an outside structure for an even bigger target for a stop hunt and again start thinking about who's in the money because very rarely do they let anybody out without taking some kind of heat on a trade so again if we were looking at today's trades sorry that was friday's trades if we were looking at today's trades we can see that the market has already come down in that lower part of that 9500 box that's a major round number we see three pins down in that lower half of the box the next likely spot we might head is up above the 9700 area again where we know there are stops and money sitting up top so depending on how the market handles that we may see some uh, a stop hunt high and then a, a resumption of the move down we're into Tuesday, day two. We've already taken out Monday's low, but we do have one push, two push, three pushes to the low with pins. We could see a measured move of this market coming up, stop hunting down again, and then continuing back for a measured move. The other scenario is that market could roll up, stop hunt, and, and do the opposite. For a measured move down so depending on how it handles the next area up top will give us some feedback if we're looking at a breakout and a, a big w reversal or if that market will roll off the double zeros and continue its move down gain pound new zealand already taken out yesterday's low you can see that we've had one push, two push, three pushes down in that lower 100 pip box again, similar to the pound Aussie. We know there's stops up above in that next upper 100 pip box in the middle. We also know there's pins and stops up at the high of the day. So this market may protect that double zero level at 2.0200, or we may see this market. Again, similar to the pound Aussie, 
one push, two push, three push, we could see this market break through, pull back, and possibly continue that move back long, or we may see this market stop on high, roll over to the downside. Again, we've got stops at the low of the day, we got stops at the high of the day, depending on how that market handles this 100 put box that we're currently trading at will give us a bit of insight as London comes on board. So again, yesterday we saw the market, oops, bring this box in here. We saw the market come back up to the high of the day just prior in the London Open. It was enough to stop hunt traders who were short in the Asia Open. The market then proceeded down through the low of the day. And as we talked about one push, two push, three pushes against the move down, stop hunted low to the 50 box before coming back up quickly to the high of the day stop hunting back down again for pulling back and going sideways into consolidation we're back up there as we speak now depending on how the market handles yesterday's high we're currently in an inside bar so that market may take traders We've got a double inside bar with Monday. We may take trap traders breaking out of the inside bar. And it is possible, as we do see with a lot of inside bars, trap traders up top and the breakout and then reverse for the measured move down. Stopping out not only the inside bar traders, but also traders who are short in the session from this morning's Asian session. The other scenario with that is that traders, we may be seeing a reversal. We are, we have been at multi-year lows on this pound yen. We could see this market break through that 2900 level, pull back and continue its move back up. As we talked about yesterday, we know that there are profitable traders still up in that 3150 area from Friday night. The pound US gave a great trade yesterday and again lots of volatility sell high setup in the London Europe London open at double zeros went to the high of the day stop hunted traders who were short from Friday night dropped down almost 200 pips to the lower 200 pip box stopping out traders from again Friday's Asian session at the low of the double zero box stopping out traders that were long in Asia again the importance of taking a profit you're up 150 pips I hope you took something off this trade and again jamming in and stop hunting traders who were short in London traders got stopped out at break even or with little profit before heading back down in the U.S. session to stop out traders who were long in that 7 o'clock stop on hour. Today, again, the market has placed a high up around that 1700 area. So we know there's stops up top from today as well as yesterday's high. And we also know that there's just been recently a low of the day been placed at that 1600 level so we could see a couple of scenarios a stop on low rise continuation back down to the low for a move up the other scenario is that we see the market hit this up top or hit that 1700 level again before giving us a measured move back down now we are an inside bar day again so just be aware that if this high gets hit from yesterday on Monday's range. We either want to see that breakout strongly and move outside of that high. Otherwise, traders who are in that move long could be facing the move back down to the low of Friday and a stop hunt not only on the inside bar traders, but traders who are long from this morning's Asian session. So again, just marking off where is the money. Looking at our double zero boxes though, we're currently between 16 and 1700. So again, working from the high and from the low. 
hopefully uh, we got some value from today's video traders stay on the outside that's where the money is the three types of things that markets do they break out they pull back they fill more orders and continue they break out they pull back and reverse we call that a false break they break out they pull back and they go into a range bound market the US pairs have all given us the same types of scenarios we saw a beautiful setup on the euro yesterday into the uh, later after the London open market painted a double bottom reversal moving 100 pips up to the high of the day the Aussie uh, yesterday not as big of a range but again the double top stop hunt in the US session for 50 pips down New Zealand very similar again not as a uh, big or strong as a, as a range but again just talking about bigger structure geometry heading into today's session a nice symmetrical triangle for a second day trade after the breakout Swiss franc US Swiss franc we have a break of yesterday's low we know that shorts are in the market we've had a three push pattern evolve over Friday Thursday Friday Monday and then heading into today it's possible we could see a consolidation inside of the 9750-9800 range for a straightaway type trade back to the downside there's lots of room on this downside but this has been a strongly trending oops strongly trending market that we could be in one large consolidation depending on how that market sets up this three push pattern could end up giving us a retest back down to the 9650 area again the end very similar we have a three touch pattern we may be looking at a reversal setup happening we've got the double top formation inside of a three larger three push pattern this market has also been in a very strong upward trend for the meantime I would be not willing to short this market unless I saw a consolidation set up inside of that 10950 11050 area for a retest back down to the 108 region Canadian dollar again very uh, another similar market the Canadian dollar weakened against the US with the oil prices Canada one of the world's largest oil exporters so we see this market significantly weakened on Friday and then we've had now one push two push three pushes and a double top formation this isn't that uncommon after a big move to retest the breakout of a trend line retesting the high we could see this market now come back down and retest yesterday's low if that happens we could see a measured move we'll go box to box somewhere possibly in this 40 50 region so lots of opportunities presenting again let the market tell us what it's going to do we don't just jump in blindly right now we're working from the high and the low if you're inside of the high and the low you're inside of a box we want to either be buying low or selling high if it's a trend trade we want to see that market break out pull back and give us a position to continue with that trend stay disciplined traders stay focused and may the markets go with you hi traders it's Stacy Burke from Stacy Burke trading if you haven't done so please head over to my website at stacyburketrading.com I create updates on almost a daily basis and I would love for you to receive them just click on the blog if you want to enter your name and your email address, I'll send you my free audio program, The 7 Step Daily Routine for High Performance Traders. This is essential knowledge for all traders in all markets, and this is for helping traders to master the market with discipline, confidence, and a winning mindset. I appreciate all your feedback and comments. As always, traders, stay disciplined, and may the markets go with you.